This week, our Cigar of the Week is the Winston Churchill The Late Hour. Joe and I will be smoking two different sizes and giving you our assessment on the show. The interview this week is William Coit from WhiskeyAndCigars.com. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we will do an episode. The smoke is going like right up my nose. Uh, we will be doing Cigars of the Week. That's right. Liga Pravada, Zeno Platinum, and like a whole bunch of stuff that I've been smoking. Coming up next on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, aka Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Hey, <clears throat> welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. I almost said Paul Security Weekly. I was distracted. The fan was blowing like right on us. And as I was talking in the intro and just now, like it was blowing it like right in. I was inhaling it basically. Uh, so hopefully we fixed that problem. Welcome everyone. It's nice to be here on the Friday afternoon now version of the Stogie Geek Show, which, uh, you know, we've undergone a lot of programming changes. Uh, I, I feel like it's a lot of programming changes. In low likelihood, it probably isn't. Uh, we used to do this show, of course, on Thursday night after Paul Security Weekly. And then it moved around uh, quite a bit, actually. It was a, a Monday cadence we had there uh, for a while. Uh, Monday night, and then it was Monday afternoon. Now it's Friday afternoon. I, and I think we've really kind of solidified our schedule here in the studio. And I like the Friday afternoon recording of the Stogie Geeks. I don't know about you, Joe, but I like this time change. It's a good time so far. Yeah, it's good. So welcome, Mr. Joe Hollywood How are you? is here with us. Now, have we discussed what your title is here on, on the network? We haven't. Go for it. Sales, sales director? Yes. Or do you want to be a VP of sales? Well, I like sales director. Sales director. Director of sales. Ms. Director of sales, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Joe Hozempa, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> Joe Hollywood. What's going on? That's what it says on the contract, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Joe's selling stuff for us, which, yeah. is, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's a lot time. of fun here. In the, I just like a little background information. Like, Joe's here all the time now. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a great addition to the team, Joe. It's uh -huh. not you. Know, we only had you really for Stoey Geeks before and uh, worked with you more and more. And now now you're stuck with us. And yeah. that's your full-time gig. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time. I mean, it's, it, it's a good time. It, it's, it's very fast-paced. Uh, a security field is definitely fascinating. Yes, you know? and very fast-paced for sure. Yeah, which yeah. is why we need cigars to kind of slow us down mm. and make us relax. Mm. Yeah, which I don't know about you, but this cigar, dude, holy crap, is it good? I don't remember this cigar. My first impression of it, I smoked. I want to say I smoked a different size and reviewed it on the show a while back. I don't remember it being this good, dude. But like from the first puff, I was like, whoa, yes, we are in for a wild ride. Uh, and so this is the Cigar of the Week, which is a Davidoff Winston Churchill, The Late Hour. Um, and there's all kinds of uh, fun information about this cigar uh, that I will read to you from Half Wheel a little about this cigar. It is the wrapper, Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro Marin, I'm going to say. Marin? Marin? Uh, it is a Mexican... San Andreas Negro binder, the filler from the Dominican Republic. Do you want to say this part, Joe? Or do you want me to? Do you want me to say it? Um, no, you okay. say it. Okay, uh, it's Dominican Republic filler from uh, Olor, Piloto, San Vicente, and Nicaraguan Condega and Esteli. Mm. Quite the mix of tobacco uh, in the filler. It uh, looks like it comes in three different sizes: Robusto, Toro, and Churchill. Of course, very. Traditional sizes, it comes out of the Winston Churchill line. Uh, so they decided to bring, according to Half Wheel, barrel aging to the Winston, Winston Churchill line. Um, like the American barrel aged, the late hour uses uh, Viso, a different leaf, but uses Viso from Condega, 
uh, Nicaragua that was aged for six months in Speyside Scotch barrels. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, around that Nicaraguan leaf, uh, three Dominican tobaccos, which we talked about, the Viso from Esteli, finished with that Mexican San Andreas binder. Uh, it, it doesn't say it here, but I think the late hour is certainly uh, paying homage to Winston Churchill, who is known to stay up late and have uh, scotch and cigars. Mm. So the fact that they aged it in a scotch barrel and a cigar, I think, is a, a nice tribute to the late Winston Churchill. Which is a line I've always really liked, which is kind of funny when we talk about the original Winston Churchill, which is a totally different blend. Um, it was, the better size was actually the Robusto. Because you think Churchill, you think Winston Churchill, and it's like, well, they have a Churchill size of the Winston Churchill. Mm -hmm. So that's the size I'm going to smoke. And it's just, it's okay. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just okay. The Robusto and the original Winston Churchill, if you can still find those, is really, really good. Uh, they've, of course, re-blended and rebranded the Winston Churchill line uh, and have produced this special edition in the late hour. My assessment so far is I am just uh, amazed by the cigar. I think it's really, really good. You really get uh, a, a blast of oak right there. Like when I first lit it, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like a very, very strong oak, like unmistakable oak uh, flavor. Mm. And I mean, that could be a side effect of uh, being in uh, the oak barrels uh, from the, you know, the aging process from some of this tobacco, although it could be just, you know, the natural essence in the tobaccos that are used in this cigar. Produces a decent amount of smoke. It's, uh, it's got a, it's, it, it leads a, a little bit of a creamy film on your palate for sure. Yeah, the draw uh, yep. is absolutely perfect. Yep, especially on the retro hail, like but you you really get the uh, creamy finish for sure. I could see me smoking more of these, uh, to be honest with you. However, uh, there was a price tag. Do you have your cellophane? Yeah, it was twenty six change. Twenty six dollars. Yeah. Twenty six dollars for yeah. the Churchill. Yeah. I thought it was twenty dollars. Twenty six dollars yep. for the Churchill. There was no price tag on the Toro, which is uh, pricey. But I could definitely uh, see myself making some room in my humidor for these bad boys. This got a 92 rating uh, from Half Wheel. And uh, they said uh, a bunch of things. They said it's a decent cigar, but if you aren't willing to adjust how you smoke as uh, slow as possible, it's not an excellent score, is what they said. I don't, I don't get that. I think the... It might be burning a little more quickly than I would have liked, but I, I, and this is my preference, I like a cigar that produces a little more smoke and has a little looser draw than I would say whatever you consider normal, right? Mm -hmm. It's in all the cigars I smoke, like you can kind of put them in different categories of, you know, like a certain class pulls a little harder, like has a, a deliberate draw, as we say. I'd say the next category from that is like it has a normal draw. Like it's not deliberate, but you know, it's, uh, it's not loose. Then I think there is a category beyond that where it's a little looser than normal. And then like on the other end of the spectrum, there's like, it's way too, way too loose. And when you, you pull, you almost don't get, you don't get as much smoke because the draw is so loose. You get more air than I, I feel like than smoke when it's too loose. Of course, too tight or plugged, uh, is an issue. Um, so that's kind of the, the scale. This one for me is perfect. I mean, this is a little above the norm in terms of draw uh, and smoke production, which is exactly where, where I like it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'd agree. It's good. Definitely. Good draw. Good amount of smoke. Very tasty. Definitely that uh, almost herbal. It's an herbally kind of oak flavor I get from it. We're pairing it with coffee, which is... Just yeah, there's nothing in our coffee. We need to work on that. Huh? We need some bourbon in our coffee or something. So is, you could do that. Yeah. Someone can get us some bourbon, you know. I think I, I would partake. Joe, how about you? Yeah, I would. If we can get some, that'd be awesome. Mm. Pick a flavor. Pick a flavor. All right. So what's uh, what's going on? What are we going to do? We're going to do some cigars. We're doing sticks about, of the week. Let's talk about some sticks of the week, We're Joe. We're sticks of the week. Let's do this. I had the Liga Pravada T52. You know, uh, and, and I always, whenever I come across, you know, in my travels and I have uh, a Liga number nine, I always kind of back it up with a T52 because you kind of never really, I can never 
you know, decide. You know, sometimes I like one better than the other. Sure. Uh, there. So uh, I had the Liga Provada T52. Uh, you have a Connecticut and Sun Grown Habano wrapper, a Brazilian Maltafina binder, and the filler is Dominican Republic with Ni- Nicaraguan in it. I mean, it's it's awesome. Still yeah. firing on all cylinders, still, right? Still yeah. firing all on all cylinders. It's it's definitely a classic. Uh, it's box worthy for sure. Now, um, did you smoke that when you were outside in the sun on vacation? No, I smoked that when I got back from vacation. Okay. Did you when you did smoke in the sun? Did you forget to put suntan lotion on the front of your legs? <laughs> I'm just saying that because <laughs> you, you can see that on camera. You can, can you? I don't know. Maybe, it maybe you can. It looks, it's it's a, a little red there, Joe. I, I, got, I got the shin thing going on, <laughs> and I'm already peeling. Like, I shaved this morning, and, and I'm already peeling. Like, your skin and, just and, came and, right and, off. And, and I'm like, really? Like, you know, you couldn't. Well, you were on, like, a 10-day vacation in Florida. Yes. Well, it was a pseudo vacation. You yeah. were still kind of. Your yeah. boss is an asshole and made you work on vacation. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did Stogie Your Geeks. Uh, that, that, that was fun. That was a good experience. Um, yeah, it looked like you were having a lot of fun out there. Not only doing Smoked it, a lot of cigars, I'm yeah. assuming, in the sun based yep. on your sunburn. So yeah, it's yeah. Good. Not only uh, doing the show remotely, but uh, I can tell you that it's a lot different doing uh, a video cast yes. remotely than radio i've always done radio mm-hmm. and i did video and it's, it's tough then people were walking in sure and they're trying to shake my hand so i'm like under the <laughs> under the skype like you know get it, you know it's amazing how people there passed out some stogie geek stickers met some nice. cool people uh it was awesome what's your rating on that um i'll take the bourbon thank you on the liga Pravada? uh yeah what's your rating on that boxworthy Boxworthy. Yeah. I'd, agree, I'd agree with Box, that. Boxworthy, you, know, you can find them uh, pretty much in any shop. You know what, though? They don't, they don't tend to go on sale. No, well, and, well, I mean, Drew Estate's one of our sponsors, right? Um, we should disclose that. But I, I, I think the reason why I don't reach out for them is because, like, I never see them on sale. No. And, and today I tend to be very much a, a, a sale shopper mm-hmm. uh, with few exceptions. I think this is one... Now that you reminded me, I need to make an exception for because that that could certainly be in my regular rotation. I think when I I think of a, a stronger cigar that's a staple in my humidor, I think Padron, I think Aliga Pravada uh, T52, mm-hmm. uh, and those are just ones that I mean you're not going to get a, a deal on them. You no. know what I mean? Mm-mm. So this is a really big bottle of bourbon, Joe. Cool. I guess we're. Some That's bullet what, bourbon? Yeah, we're going to second gear now, Dude, right? I, I highly recommend bourbon in the coffee. I mean, just if you need to get through your morning uh, or afternoon <laughs> or evening, I mean, really, any time, there's no Cheers. wrong time to have bourbon in your coffee. There is definitely a wrong time to spill it all over the table, though. That's usually all the time. You shouldn't do that like I just did, so I spilled a little. But, yeah, I gave it box worthy. Complexity, flavor, and balance. Complexity, I gave it an eight. Flavor, I gave it an eight, and balance, I gave it a nine. It's it's just a good stick. It's it's a solid stick from uh, Drew Estate for sure. Uh, I smoked the uh, the Velvet Rat. Have you had these? Yes. You have some? I do. Really? Yeah. Well, you want to smoke this one later? Sure. Uh, this is from the Unico series, of course. Um, and I picked up two because they were in a local shop. Uh, this is Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, Brazilian Matafina binder, Honduran and Nicaraguan filler. Uh, you know, this is, of course, you know, a take uh, on, you know, the Dirty Rat, kind of a, a different sized, uh, slightly tweaked version uh, based on the Dirty Rat. It was, I found it to be, uh, and you, you can have this one if you want to smoke, if you haven't smoked one before. I found it to be pretty mild. Like, it's not a bold... It's not like the Dirty Rat where it has like a really bold uh, profile. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found it to be a little lighter. I thought it was good. I'd probably give it a fiver. Um, I think if it had a lot more uh, kind of those uh, stronger, bolder flavors to it, which is, I don't know, that was kind of like what I was expecting. I liked it, you know, and in, in give it the fiver rating. Um, I think I prefer some of the other Unico series over that one, but certainly that one's a fiver. And really only because it didn't really fit my, you know, my profile being in the, uh, again, I found it to just not be very bold. Um, maybe need to smoke it again. So you're going to give that back. I guess I'm gonna, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm curious to see what your assessment is of that. I did, I did like it. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take some time out and critique that. Get back to you next episode for sure. 
Did you smoke any of those Cubans I gave you? Uh, the San Cristobal so far. San Cristobal de la Habana La Punta. Yeah. I just love saying that. There you go. It's like awesome. It. <laughs> what did you, what was your assessment of that? I think it, it kind of got plugged about halfway through. That happened to me on one yeah, of them too. M- more towards the end, it, it, it got plugged, but I got pretty much through 80% of it. Uh, it was, it was, it was a good stick. Um, the draw was a little tight. Um, definitely. So with it having a tight drawer, it didn't produce a uh, good amount of smoke for me. Right. You know, I kind of kept have, having to stay on it and work it and, and, you know, uh, but in, in regards to, to the flavor, you light it and you, and you get a nice blast of tobacco sweetness, a little bit of it. To me, it, it, it was like the, the pepper component was trying to, trying to come out and it just didn't, it was, it was, it wasn't flat though. It just kind of. It just was trying to creep out. Yeah, I get a nice get blast that. of cedar, too. Yep. I, I was thinking. Especially when you first light it up. I mean, the flavors when you first light that up. Now, you know, that box date is about a year. Okay. And those have not rested in my humidor for maybe even a, a full week. So uh, keep that in mind in our <laughs> assessment of that cigar. I think in terms of Cuban cigars, that's certainly one of my favorites. Uh, and I really like the flavor profile uh, of that particular stick. Uh, very much mm. so. You picking up a salty component on this now? Or mm-hmm. you think it's the bourbon? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm picking up, starting to pick up a salty component. Yeah, I don't know if you're just influencing my, my palate now by putting that in my head. I don't know. I just, right there, on, on, on the tip for sure. Xeno Platinum. Make Xeno of, Platinum. Make of Texas. I Oh, this is their uh their line that they do in the different states with yep. different shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Some of these are really good. Yeah, yeah. The um I mean it's it's a little on the expensive side, so you know, if you want to treat yourself, uh you won't be disappointed. You have the wrapper is Ecuador, the binder is Dominican Republic, so is the filler. You start it starts off a little bit smooth, but when you get past that first inch uh, it, re- it really kicks in to a uh, really decent medium smoke. Uh, I would go back to these. As far as a rating, I mean, I'd have to go maybe, you know, box split, you know, uh, box split with a friend. Again, <laughs> you're probably not going to find a deal on these at all. It, it, it's one of those prices where they do the one from, from the different states. Uh, they kind of uh, stay right where they are within their price point complexity flavor and balance i gave it all eights across the board it's a decent stick um i'm kind of getting into i i, I want to try some of the other stuff that xeno has has to offer that's my next <coughs> kind of 30 day 45 day goal <coughs> xeno makes some really cool stuff mm. it's different some of their stuff has a real heavy herbal component and I like it as kind of a nice departure because mm-hmm. it is very, very unique to that, to that brand is what I found. I smoked a, an Alec Bradley <coughs> Coyol, 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 C-O-Y, Coyol, C-O, maybe Coyol. we should just start spelling things. It's the C-O-Y-O-L Coyol. cigar Coyol. in the Petit Lancero. Uh, it's a Honduran Trojas, Tro, Trojas, Oof. Trojas. I think is how you pronounce that. I gotta say it like three more times too. Uh, that's the wrapper. The binder is Nicaraguan Jalapa and Honduran Trojas. Troje, Trojes, Trojas. Nicaraguan T R O T R O J E S. Okay, and I thought I knew how to pronounce it, and apparently I don't. Trojas. Trojes. Thank you. Trojes sounds better. I knew. I felt like I was missing something in my pronunciation. Trojes. Nicaraguan. Uh, Filler from Esteli and Condega, and more Honduran Trojes in the filler. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. There is the same tobacco in the wrapper, binder, and filler, which is pretty cool. This to me was uh, a try one. It really didn't. Uh, it didn't pop for me. Uh, these have been sitting around. These were released in 2014. Uh, that I I might have uh, acquired this in 2014 and just gotten around to to smoking some of them. I think I did smoke some when they first came out. Um, I think it's lost a little bit of its punch mm-hmm. and oomph. Uh, so I would call it, a, you know, a try one. It might fit your flavor profile. But for me, I thought that the uh, the earthy component that typically you get from the Honduran tobacco was there. But it, it wasn't pronounced. Uh, and so, again, I feel like it lost some. So. Was it flat or just? It was kind of flat, yeah. to be honest with you. Yep. Yeah. Oh. 
Dust the dust the try one. Try one. Yes. Um, these are surprisingly good. The uh, Charter Oak. Yes, I like those a lot. Yes, the Charter Oak Maduro by Foundation Cigar Company. Uh, you have a Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper. Binder is a Nicaraguan Habano. Your filler is uh, Nicaragua from Jalapa and Esteli. I stayed away from this stick for a while, you know, because of its price point. You know, is it, it a lower price point? It's a five five okay. five dollars and fifty so. cents here in Rhode mm-hmm. Island. So you know, ish, you know, and so you know, it got released. I kind of stayed away. Some of the some of the other stuff from Foundation, like the uh, Connecticut's, are you know they're in that twelve to fourteen. So then all of a sudden they come up with the Maduro, Charter Oak, and it's five bucks. So I'm like, you know, I don't know, are they seconds? Are they not? Uh, I, I stayed away from it for a while, and you know, when I had it. Uh, complexity, I gave it a seven. Flavor and balance, I I gave it an eight. These are good sticks, and for the price, I mean, you cannot beat them at all. So I give them box split. I like the robusto size better. I've I've had a couple of the different sizes, but I think the robusto is where it's at. That's the Chata Oak Maduro. Uh, a listener wrote in about the Quesada España. Mm. <clears throat> They said that they had found some at a, a local shop, I think, after we had talked about them on the show. Mm-hmm. I just love this stick, and I know yes. there's kind of a great debate between is it the Corona Gordo or is it the Short Robusto. I've always liked the Short Robusto. Uh, this is uh, an Ecuadorian uh, Rapidraca wrapper, uh, binder Dominican Republic and filler Dominican and Nicaraguan. Uh, I, I, I wish like these were more readily available. Um, it's Because the Short Robusto is a really short, kind of quick smoke. And, like, my only complaint is that it's just, like, I want more from it. Um, but I think the short Robusto gives you the best flavor. Uh, these are mild morning smokes uh, at this point. Mild to medium. I wouldn't say they're super mild, but more on the medium uh, end of the spectrum. And it, it just the, the flavors are somewhat reminiscent of a uh, Cuban kind of twang going on. Kind of in that, in that vein. Um, I think the story behind these is these were released to the European market, um, which again, they, I think a lot of manufacturers try to at least put their cigars in a flavor and strength profile that matches the Cuban market when they release into Europe, which is why I really like a lot of the cigars that were released to Europe because they've got the, it's a medium bodied with full flavor. And, and we've talked about this on the show and that's really what I'm after in a cigar, uh, oftentimes, and that's not to say I don't reach for, you know, a stronger cigar, uh, in the evening, um, or a much milder cigar, you know, first thing in the morning with coffee, perhaps, but this, you know, I, the Espana to me in this size really embodies the whole medium bodied with full flavor, uh, that's going on in a cigar. And, you know, that's why this one is by Chuck Norris for me. I uh, want to thank our, one of our listeners that wrote in and said that, you know, they had found some, I believe is, no, it wasn't that, it was the Curse. That's another one. Um, the Oktoberfest and the Curse size, which is a very similar size. Mm-hmm. I think almost the exact same size of this cigar. That was the one he found. That's another one of my favorites as well. That's a solid medium that's got a little more, uh, a lot more strength in it than this, I believe. Um, but they're both solid offerings from Quesada, and I find it, uh, interesting that they're both in the same size. Like whatever they're doing to get this size, the blending that goes into this particular size, I just I love it. I like that size. It's a good it's forty-five awesome. minute smoke. Right. Um, you know, down in South Florida, what I, what I thought was pretty cool. Um, there was a bunch of uh, customers that came into the local shop, and they would get that size and sit there for a half hour, and then yeah. grab their coffee. Go back to work. And, and yeah. then go back to work. So it's sure. if, if, if you're in that environment uh, where you can't sit around and relax with, with, with a cigar. We're that's, spoiled here. That's a great size. Because we can sit around with a Churchill if we want <laughs> <laughs> and well, just kick it. You know? You know, yeah, it's a, it's a good perk. <laughs> we didn't have Bloody Marys this morning, though. I'm kind of disappointed. No, we had a lot of we had a busy we morning. Need, we need to... We need to get on that on Friday mornings. Yeah. I think that needs to be more of a tradition around here. Friday morning Bloody Marys. At 12? We have no, to come at in an like hour nine, early. At like 9 when we get here. 
depends on the Our meetings. first meeting is until 9.30. we got a half an hour. It depends on the meeting. Like, what do you do in that half an hour? I think I, we should be making Bloody Marys. I've That's been, what I'm I've saying. I've been here since 7.30. I'm we are saying. hiring. We're looking for an executive producer, and, you know, these are the kinds of discussions that we have around here in the office. <laughs> if that's, you know, an incentive for you, uh, you know, let us know. So what's going on? Uh, what, you got, you would do with smoking the Macanudu. Mm. Is that what you're going to cover now? I see that on your screen. Yeah, yeah. I had the... Uh, you say yeah, yeah, like you weren't a big fan. Like I can already, I can tell by your initial <laughs> you can, yeah, reaction the, now, the, Joe, the, like what the rating is roughly going to be. Yeah, the, the, you can pretty much tell. I wear my, you know, my face. My face will tell you yes. a lot for sure. Yeah, it does. <laughs> a lot oh, of stuff. Yes. The Mac. You have really nice eyes too, by the, the way. Thanks, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> the, the inside joke. The, 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 the Macaduno <laughs> Inspirado Red. I mean. See, no, I thought this was a good cigar. This was a fiver for me, Joe. I thought this was a good cigar. No. Nope. No? Size is 5 by 50. It's box pressed. Uh, The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Habano. The binder is Nicaraguan. And the filler is Nicaraguan, Honduran, and some extra Nicaraguan from Esteli. When I first lit it up, I was like, wow. We get, you get a, you get that Nicaraguan pepper blast. I was like, okay, it's gonna be pretty good. With so a, a lot of, I think a lot of earth. I think you yes. get that earthiness from the Honduran and Nicaraguan tobacco, which I think they have their own classification, like different types of that earth, which sounds weird to say the the earth flavor, right? Like we're eating dirt or something, but there is, there's no other way I can think of to describe that earth flavor. But it's different Nicaraguan versus Hon. But they've combined those together, and it gives it a unique profile. Definitely lets you know it's there, coupled with the you know peppery component. I liked it. I liked it first inch or two. After that, it just it didn't even go flat. I just it, it, and I it's just, not for everyone either. It just yeah. it just didn't speak to me. Right. You know, it's it's that you know it wasn't bad. It was constructed good. Like I said, just didn't fit your palate. Sure. When I first lit it up, I was pretty impressed. You know, I haven't really haven't had a macaduno anything in a long time. You know. Um, it's just, I just never got to them over in rotation. I do like the, the, uh, nope, that's the wrong blame. No, <laughs> I really have not had a Macaduno in a really long time, quite, quite frankly. I, I gave it a try one. The good news is I do have, uh, about four or five more left. So, you know, I'm going to put it aside and I'll revisit it, but. Oh, I thought you say I'm going to give them away to someone else. No, no, no. <laughs> You should revisit. So if Would I'm you? if I'm walking around in, in the next four weeks and I give you a uh, Macanudo a Macanudo inspirational red, I apologize in advance. You know, there you go. That's just Macanudo. Yeah, Macanudo. 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 Maca. Macanudo. I say it separately. Uh, uh, you say it right. like three different ways. It's That's, pretty funny. Welcome to my world. <laughs> you just you keep a scorecard, <laughs> right? All the different ways, and we'll score you at the end. <sighs> I'd probably get like a 69 or something. Every time you say it right, we give you a point. Every time you say it wrong, we deduct a point. Is there a curve? Is there, is there, is there a curve at the end no, of the, no, the, end of the no month with, this, with, these, with these tests? <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. There's no grading curve. Okay. There might be a curve in how you pronounce things. Yeah. You might score low in the beginning, and then once I correct you about eight times, then, then you get it right. Sometimes. Yeah, you don't listen to the show for the correct pronunciation. I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there. You like, certainly don't listen to the show. I, we've never, <laughs> we, but we've never from the beginning touted the show as when you listen, we're going to pronounce everything correctly. And that's like our, our, our MO. It's not. Yeah, it's not. Wow. We're, we're going to mess up the uh, pronunciation and use this as an opportunity to have a conversation with us afterwards when you listeners and, and manufacturers and blenders uh, like to correct us about the correct pronunciation. Send all your we corrections try. to Paul at StogieGeeks.com. <laughs> we try. I mean, we at least try to get it to get it right. But, you know, we're from Rhode Island. We don't pronounce anything right. That's, that's probably very true. Right? How many more you have? I have one more. Well, I just, I've got some, some of my regular smoking things. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, old E.P. E- Carrillo, older E.P. Carrillo with the old uh, band on it. Uh, this is a Toro size in the in the core line. I want to say this is a Sumatra wrapper. These are just firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, um, the burn and draw and the flavor were just spot on. Great everyday smoking cigar. And, you know, a lot of these with the old labels on them and such, you can find on closeout. <gasps> Excuse me. I think uh, uh, next door they've got some five packs with some of these uh, in them for sale at the Havana Cigar Club if you're in the, the area uh, right next door to... 
the Stogie Geeks and G Unit Studios. Uh, so def I mean, that is just quintessential cigar smoking for me. Like I, those are usually in my rotation. What's crazy is when they did the rebanding. Yes. Then they put them on clearance to get rid of them. To get rid of the old bands. But the old bands are the ones that have been sitting there, and those are the ones that are aged. So those, those are the, the ones, ones you want. want. Those are the right? ones you want. Those, those, Absolutely. You know, so if you go... Nothing to, wrong with the new ones, just right. the older ones have more age, right? <laughs> right, yeah. right. You know. And then I smoked this Casa, uh, Miami Casa Fernandez uh, Reserva. That's a great stick. Great stick. Like great that. stick. Oh, uh, Actually, I've got... Uh, this is actually a different one that I pulled. This is the one with the gold band around the foot. Uh, these, uh, I don't know if it's different or if it's just age, but I order two different bundles of these for like ridiculously cheap. Um, I'll admit, I ordered online. It were bundles. They weren't in boxes. They came in cellophane uh, wrapped bundles uh, and the cigars themselves were in cellophane. And it was a Casa Fernandez Miami Reserva in both the Maduro and the natural. And I have to say at like a $3 and change price point, I've got two bundles, and like I couldn't be happier. These cigars are awesome. Uh, I love them. You know, of course, the the wrapper differences present very different flavor profiles. Uh, I don't. I, I can't really like pick a favorite. I like smoking both of them. Uh, I think they're really good, and I highly recommend that to our listeners. Uh, you know, oftentimes here in New England, we don't get a lot of the Casa Fernandez stuff, um, but Joyles has been carrying it actually, and I picked up a couple. Uh, we smoked one a couple of Friday mornings ago, uh, as well as a different one from from Casa Fernandez. I'm liking what uh, I've been smoking from them. So, yeah, the you one we smoke smoked uh, was was uh, like a solid red label. Yeah, yeah, you I know. forgot what that. One. We covered it on a previous show. Yeah. How is your Winston Churchill, the late hour in the Churchill size, doing? Excellent. You know, saltiness starting to fade, so I guess it wasn't the bourbon, and it's back to. I'm getting that original oak. Yeah, it's, it's not as pronounced as in the very first third. Right, but but it's fa it's fading in and out. It, it it did go through a saltiness phase for me, and then now it's 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 getting back to the oak and in the cedar. Yeah, it's a little like a richer kind of flavor now. It's not as heavy on that wood kind of notes that we got in the in the first third. Uh, it's a, a little richer. Those aren't as pronounced. I I think it's still very very good. I mean. You got to smoke these slow, I think, to go along with what Halfwheel was saying. I agree with that assessment. I also think you got to pay attention to the cigar. Uh, I feel like I've done it somewhat kind of a disservice, you know, talking and doing the show while smoking the cigar. I haven't been paying attention as much as I should to the flavors. When you do uh, and are conscious of the flavors you're getting, like there's a whole lot going on with the cigar. Like Joe said, there's a saltiness component that kind of comes and goes. There's some uh, a wood and in, in, in cedar notes that are in it. It's just a a great cigar that I would recommend you pay attention to smoke in a controlled environment and don't be doing anything else. And of course these cigars carry, you know, a, a $20 or better price point. So when you have a cigar of that, you know, you don't want to smoke that while you're doing something else. You want to pay attention to it. Pairing wise, where do you think, what do you think you should pair with this? Definitely coffee. Um, it'd be interesting if uh, I would, I'm thinking, I'd like to probably either do a uh, straight whiskey and, you know, may maybe maybe uh, maybe a scotch. I was thinking you more know? of a cognac, though. Really? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, you could pair with, I mean, pairings are, are subjective, but just the flavor profile to me kind of speaks to having something a little sweeter that doesn't have a a spicier bite component to it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think a nice cognac would go really well with this. Yep. A red wine would. Oh, red wine for sure. For yes. Sure. Yes. I'm thinking. Do exact, we have any red wine? We need some red wine. Exact red wine. I'm thinking I've been on a, like a Louis Martini kick. That's the name of the wine. Oh, yeah. Louis Martini kick in, in like the Cabernet Sauvignon. Sure. It's like thick. So it, it just, it's, it's, so it's a heavier. That would go very well with yeah, this Yeah, it's a heavier yes. body, and I'm just like, yeah, that, that's You could I, pair a lot of different red wines with it. You could go fruitier. You could go a little uh, darker and heavier. Uh, you, you could be in a, a lot of different spectrums of red wine that would pair well with this cigar, Joe. Yeah. Last week on the Stogie Geeks, I did red wine before coffee because mm. we were rushing to get that's to the. an to interesting the, Order. Well, no, I walked in to, and, they, and they, had oh, yeah, they, had, red, yeah. they had the wall, yeah. and he's like, oh, what do you want? I was like, 
I melt back. I was like, that, that's that'd be great. He's like, okay. I thought he was gonna give me the thing. Gives you the bottle. Gives you the bottle. And I was like, all right, cool. So then I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, oh, well, I need a coffee. Like, uh, <laughs> I need a balance. I, got, I, got, I need a coffee. Wine does make me sleepy too. Yeah. Yeah, but it was good. It it, it, it was great. But uh, a, a red wine with this, a cognac would go good with this. The, um, and this isn't like a, a summertime kind of cigar. No. No, this is like yeah. a, a night. If it's a summer, like it's nighttime, it's a cognac red wine. Yep. Pairing cigar. Yeah, if if it's hot assessment. out, you don't want to. You don't, don't want to. You, you don't want to no. do this. Uh, I'm thinking. Um, my favorite weather is shorts and sweatshirt. Yeah. Or shorts and long sleeve shirt. Sure. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah, like not. I agree. Like the best smoking time here in New England uh, is like a springtime. If you can catch a day when it's not raining here in New England, which this year was pretty challenging, uh, or in the fall when you don't necessarily need like a coat and pants, like you're saying, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not hot, so you can get away with the shorts and a long sleeve, right? Yeah. So it's comfortable, like that 70-degree mm-hmm. dry weather. Light breeze. Light breeze. I'm perfect. In. Perfect. You can pretty much smoke anything when it's that weather. Yeah. I think it, it, yeah, but that's where you're getting if, that. If, if it was an 80-degree day or if you were in South Florida. Yeah, no, this isn't like your 80-degree yeah. grilling on the deck kind of cigar. No, because it, it, it does leave your palate a little bit dry. See, if, I'm not getting that. You know, I, I, I'm getting, I'm getting the... Yeah, I could probably, you know, use a little more bourbon or... or. Well, you could always use a little more <laughs> bourbon, Joe. <laughs> you know. I had the All Out King Smash. Ooh. Uh, complexity, I gave it an 8. Flavor, I gave it an 8. Balance, I gave it a 7. Um, I've had all, all of the sizes on this stick. And I had them when they first came out. So what is the Smash? A Smash, well, the sm- well it's, it's four different sizes, so... The All Out King Smash is a 5x52. Uh, the, the other size is called Gimme, as in G-I-M-M-E. So, Gimme Your Lunch Money. Uh, another one's called the uh, Forever Last. And the fourth uh, offering from All Out Kings is the fourth Poves. I've had all of the So, sizes. my joke about the lunch money, right? No. You saw the meme I posted in the, the chat where it says, Next time you ask a bully for the lunch money, tell him you left it on his mother's dresser. <laughs> <laughs> People got a kick out of that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this stick here, I mean, you know, wrapper is a Connecticut Habano, binder is an Indonesian Sumatra, filler is a Connecticut Broadleaf Lajero with Dominican Corojo ninety seven and Nicaraguan from Jalapa and Esteli. Uh, size again is a uh, five by fifty two. Great stick. Like I said, I've had this in in all of different sizes. It's one of my favorite offerings by uh, Caldwell, mm-hmm. and actually, it's a collaboration effort as well. It's uh, uh, Caldwell and Joe State. Sweet. Uh, that's all I had. I didn't give my rating. Oh, no, sorry. No, that's okay. The rating. Joe, give you a rating. What's your rating? <laughs> I was getting there. Uh, the the rating I gave this was definitely box split. Nice. Have uh, you you've had these, right? The- no, I had. You know, I don't do a lo- whole lot of sampling of the the Caldwell. Mm-hmm. Line. I mean, I have smoked them, and it's. I mean, it, it just by it, and it's not by choice, right? I just I haven't mm-hmm. smoked a lot of them. Mm-hmm. I need to get back to smoking more of them. I like because I like Robert. He's a good guy. Yeah, and, and it, it, the cigars are good. So it's a it's a good note for me to to do more of that. No, this last cigar, Joe. Are we clear in the pronunciation? And I've already established that we suck at pronunciation. Uh-oh. Is it the Kumpe? <laughs> C- it's the C-U-M-P-A-Y cigar from Maya Selva mm-hmm. Cigars. You brought this back for me from Florida. Yes. This was a 60 ring? Yes. You brought back? We've reviewed the cigar before. Yes. Um, I-, I really like this cigar. And again, what I really like, Maya Selva is another uh, manufacturer that really embodies that medium strength, full flavor. And I think that's why when we talk about them, when we give them to other people, they're on board with it, right? Because it's not overpowering on the strength. It's not a mild. It's that full flavor in uh, a medium cigar. And this exemplifies that profile as well. Uh, Being a 60 ring, I really liked it, despite it being a 60 ring, and say whatever you will about 60 ring. I thought it was firing all cylinders. This is a box split all day long. Mm. Uh, I thought the flavors were spot on. 
and it was good. I liked it a lot. I would smoke more of these. I really, I think I could really get on the whole bandwagon with Maya Selva and have regular rotation in my humidor. I am on the bandwagon with Maya Selva already. I'm, I'm very well, impressed. Because you were in a shop that carries them around here. Like, I, <laughs> dude, if there was a shop that ca- I need to get, get online and order some. Yeah. Because they're just not available around here. Yeah. I mean, support your local retailer. That's, we, we've said that on the show like a thousand times, a million times. Mm. But it, w- these cigars just aren't available here in New England, as far as I can tell, unless I missed it. If I missed it, please let me know. They but are not. I've, they are, you've, I've, you've been to more shops in Rhode Island than I have. No, they're, they're not. In, in Any shops in Rhode Island. A couple episodes back, we interviewed uh, Jeff, mm. uh, who is who was the uh, rep over in France. Yes. In Switzerland. And now his task, uh, he's stationed in Hollywood, Florida, uh, which I had a chance to visit them. And then he came to me at the shop. He actually, uh, great hospitality, Jeff provided. Mm. He took us to a shop that uh, has all of the Maya Selva products. The whole products. Line. sure. And, you know, it, and, that, and that's where we did Stoya Geeks last week. And, and very impressed with the line. And I told him that you definitely need to get these in New England. I think yeah. they do very well, especially I think that the Northeast here really goes after, even though they're, they're boutique, even though they're mm-hmm. very popular down in France and Switzerland, um, I, I think that um, here in the Northeast that the not only the Stogie Geek listener, but the cigar uh, con- consumer would definitely flock towards these cigars. One would hope. There's a lot that goes into that formula, but I... Uh, I like smoke. I would certainly buy them. <laughs> Whatever that, that's worth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so interview coming up next? Yep. I got to run. I got to go pick well, up my kids and we stuff. We are but. interviewing um, William from cigarsandwhiskey.com. Uh, they have an offering, which you're going to hear all about. They provide a, a, a fascinating service of delivering uh, pa- prepared whiskey and cigars on a monthly basis for subscription. Really? Yes. And it varies. We need that. Please note for the Stogie Geeks listener, it varies per your state. So we'll go through that with the interview. Oh, wait. We can't have that here. We cannot (sighs) have that here. There's 30. Just beer and wine in Rhode Island? Just just beer and wine. Gotcha. But but um, for the 32 states that are allowed to. Right. Um, but then they also have some fascinating events that you can go to mm-hmm. in uh, different sections, uh, big cities, Los mm-hmm. Angeles, Miami. That sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Miami's you know, a fun city. And we're going to talk about some of their events and what they got going on. I'm interested in asking him um, about the pairings, what types of cigars. Yeah. I wonder if it would be more – classic facings mm-hmm. or if they dabble into mm, the boutiques. boutiques and we're going to get have a liquor conversation for sure excellent so. with that we'll take a short break come back with our interview for this week stay tuned <laughs> 